Good morning, folks, and welcome to Stock Charts Today. This is Bob Desmond at The Contrarian Trader. It is at current 524 in the a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let's get to it. We're going to go over this morning, first, a couple of charts that I have up here. Not many. A couple of uh, watch stocks. I don't think I have any uh, member stock chart requests this morning. But we'll go over those charts that we're watching. We'll talk about NUGT and the gold mining names. We were stopped out of half of our position yesterday. And that leads us into a conversation with regard to knee-jerk reactions to economic data or uh, any news event, anticipated news event, not necessarily uh, a geopolitical event. And we'll talk about the price action yesterday with the U.S. dollar versus the price of gold. And then we're going to talk about the pre-market activity. So let's get to it. Before we begin, if I could ask you, please subscribe, like, you know the deal. Leave a comment. And as a reminder, on Saturday, I will be sending out best stock charts for the coming week. If you're not currently on our email list, click that bar above, which should be appearing, or click the link in the comment section below. Go over to the website, enter your email address, we hate spam too. Let's get to the charts. So yesterday, we had the FOMC meeting. No shock at what transpired yesterday. There was a slight change to the statement. To be specific, it related to the strength of the overall economy. They did not raise rates, and really nobody expected them to, but there is an 80% chance of a rate hike in September. So before we go to the pre-market activity, let's talk about uh, a, a couple of uh, positions we may be putting on here fairly soon. The first stock up, I have, I have to be honest with you, I almost hit the floor on this one, S-H-O-O. Has anybody watched The Wolf of Wall Street? Steve Madden. So uh, this is a company that was featured in The Wolf of Wall Street, and we are setting up for a major, major breakout here on a daily chart. You can see we have a beautiful bull flag formation. And when you take a look at the weekly chart, we have a beautiful consolidation here. We have a high, an all-time high of $56.70. We're not that far away from that level. We were up a buck sixty yesterday, and we have a support level at $52 per share. So an ever strengthening trading range. Volume thus far this week to the upside is very good. So I think that we're going to break out here any day now. And we will look to be long. We will be sending out a trade alert to members. Now, the next position that we're watching is DPST. DPST is a regional bank ETF with no exposure that I know of anyway to the money center banks. So why do I like the regional banks versus the money center banks? The regional banks do not rely upon trading for profits. They rely upon NIM, net interest margins. And with rates moving higher, the regional banks should benefit. Now we are well off the highs last seen back in June. And we broke out yesterday above this upper band of resistance outside of this triangle formation. So we're looking good here. And I will be sending out a trade alert to members when we execute the trade. I will say this. I do not like the fact that the 50 period moving average is declining. That will act as a declining ceiling on the shares. So that will influence the position size that we put on. At least initially. Until, of course we start breaking through these resistance levels. So members, more to come here. The next chart up is NUGT. Now, NUGT has had a very, very rough summer, no doubt about it. And I think that we are going to rally fairly soon. There's a problem, though. And that problem reared its head yesterday after the FOMC announcement, I'm going to go over what I was looking at and why I stopped out in a moment. But first, let's talk about the daily chart. We have had not one here, but two 
here. Breakout point failures on or bull traps on NUGT over the past couple of weeks. So the shares are weak and they are breaking down below critical support. Last seen back here in February of 2018. So we're at a not only a month over month low. We hit a new monthly low versus July, but we're at a, a, a yearly low. So the next stop, according to my charts, is down in the teens before we bottom out. Now, we may never get there. You never know with these leveraged ETFs. But I still think that there's going to be pressure on the shares for a couple of reasons. One, back to the daily chart. We closed very close to the lows of the day yesterday. This isn't necessarily what bottoms are made of. Now, if we drop down again today and then flash a bullish key reversal, that's sexy. That would get me interested again to get me back involved. That's a sign of a bottom. But we don't have that signal yet by the market. Now, let's go to the intraday charts. We'll talk about why I'm glad that we stopped out yesterday on NUGT and why I believe that the shares in all probability will move lower for at least the next couple of trading days. Let's get to the pre-market activity. All right, so here's the U.S. dollar. Now, the U.S. dollar initially after, let's drill down here to, say, a 15-minute chart. Initially yesterday, on the FOMC meeting right here, it sold off. But that was the knee-jerk reaction, right? And the knee-jerk reaction, what I always try to teach members, is usually the wrong one. So believe me, when I looked at the quote and I saw that we were dropping down on the U.S. dollar, I wasn't happy about it. I knew it would be good for gold, at least in the short run, but in all probability, it would be wrong. Let's take a look at gold and the miners, the same deal. Here, let's go to Nugget. Nugget initially rallied, but then it sold off. Gold initially rallied, and then it sold off. So that's not good price action. And ever since I woke up this morning, when I woke up, we were down at buck ten. It's actually where I fell asleep where it was at too. Down at buck ten. It held up overnight. But now it's beginning to break down. We're down three dollars twenty cents this morning. So we're leaning against the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. We were down lower. We'll probably pop here at some point in time. Now the dollar is just on a tear. Now, yesterday, this is the reason why I'm glad we stopped out, is that when you take a look at how we closed out yesterday, this is a four-hour chart, and we broke out, a solid breakout, and we are now trading above the pivot point. Note how we had a W formation, and we have now broken out above that pivot point. So dollar strength usually means gold weakness, gold mining weakness. Now... What had me, beside the chart, confident that the dollar would continue to rally? Folks, The and to my European watchers out there, no offense, but the ECB just can't get out of its own way. They can't make a decision on raising rates. They, for all intents and purposes, including the Japanese, are in a currency war. Now, we've had President Trump out there over the past couple of weeks, jawboning the dollar a little bit. That may intensify in the future. You have Greece, which has come to the front burner yet again. The Italians, they have a new government. They are very conservative. I think it's about time. Enough damage has been done to that beautiful country. And fears of a Brexit-type exit for the Italians, uh, if that chatter continues, it's not going to help the euro any. So that will drive the U.S. dollar higher. And taking a look at the euro this morning, it's in free fall. So that's not going to help gold. It's going to help the dollar, which means it's going to hurt gold. Taking a look at the Japanese, they can't get out of their own ways. They, they, since the 1990s, they've had quantitative easing. It hasn't worked. They've run out of things to buy over there, and they haven't given up. What's the very definition of insanity? Is doing the same exact thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. The Japanese, great people, 
but their central bank is pretty much insane. Now, are there threats to the U.S. dollar? You bet you. In all probability, last quarter we hit peak GDP, at least in the short run. We are taking on a vast amount of debt to pay for the tax cuts. You have the threat now, especially after that tweet yesterday from President Trump of Mueller being fired. If that occurs, that is a seismic event on the scale of geopolitical. Have no doubt about it that the dollar will tank no matter how bad the euro is and the yen are, they will rally in that event. And gold will rally as well. We also had economic data out this week. That was inflationary. So the question then becomes, while yes, the Federal Reserve is raising rates, are they behind the curve in real terms with regards to inflation? So all is not perfect for the U.S. dollar, but it is the least ugly of the bunch as it stands right now. Let's get to the pre-market activity for the major averages. Okay, we'll begin with the S&P 500, and we are having a very ugly morning. We are down uh, over a half percentage point, 18 points in total. We are retesting this lower band of support. We have lower highs. I did mean to put out a, a swing trading today yesterday, but the editing software completely got messed up. I had to abandon that video. We were watching at that point in time the consolidation within this triangle formation. We did break down below the lower band of support. This is critical support here, folks, because we have a head and shoulder setup. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. This is the neckline. And if it breaks, we can come all the way back down here to 27.65. So be very careful. Now, if we rally to close positive on the day, that's a bullish reversal day. That's really good stuff. That's a buy signal for the market. But as it stands right now, we're seeing a ton of weakness this morning. The NASDAQ, the NASDAQ has been weak of late, lower highs, lower lows. We did manage to recapture this support level here. Now we're retesting that lower band yet again. Here's the high level view. Lower highs, if we take out this low here, last seen on um, the 30th, you're going to see all sorts of uh, problems for this market. So I would strongly encourage folks that if you're not long of the market right now, sit on cash. Cash is king. You have the dollar rallying. And here is the market sending you a signal back here on RSI. And as I always like to teach members is that you know, RSI and the stochastics are so misrepresented. You know, yes, they're good for identifying extreme overbought and extreme oversold levels, but that's how they're marketed. In reality, the purpose of these indicators is to spot divergences in price action versus momentum. And what we're seeing here. I think that's enough lines for you to get the picture. What we're seeing here is back on the 9th of July. Think about that. The 9th of July, we peaked out on RSI. That was right here. But despite the fact that we peaked out, every rally, despite we, the fact that we made new higher highs, every rally came with a lower high on RSI. That's the market sending you a signal. That's the proper way of identifying that this market had trouble in front of it. And the fact that we're trading down below 50 on RSI is a problem. That's the neutral level. So be very, very careful with buying the dip in this market right now. Now let's take a look at the 10-year Treasury note because that tells a story as well. Because one might expect that after the Federal Reserve was fairly bullish in their statement yesterday on rates, and at least the economy, if you don't want to interpret it as bullish on rates. Uh, the 10-year Treasury note is up this morning. That means that yields are down. Now, we did see some weakness earlier, or I should say overnight, but we have bounced back since that point in time. We do have some topping tails here. 
We haven't closed out this four hour bar yet, so we do have resistance above. If we fail and we take out the lows of this session, last night's session, on the 10 year Treasury note, that means yields are moving higher and probably in a dramatic fashion if we break down to new lower lows. So, in summary, folks, caution flag is on the track for this morning. Sit in cash, watch how the market closes. I would not go trying to catch a falling knife today. And remember, folks, please, if you watch us on YouTube, click that like button. Give us a share if you watch us on Facebook, Twitter, wherever. Leave a comment. And don't forget, we have a 14-day free trial offer if you'd like to sign up. The website is under redevelopment. Once we are done with the development, which is going to take about another six weeks, prices do go up. So lock them in now. We do not raise rates on existing members ever. Everybody have a profitable trading day and be well.